Welcome to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. Good evening, everyone, and welcome inside the KDK studios. This is the neighborhood Ford store Extra Point, and it is the final point of the Steelers season as they lose in Buffalo 31 to 17. Their season is over. It's seven consecutive years without a playoff win. Bob Pompiani here with Chris Hokey Bro 76. <laughs> as we Bob. analyze this game, um, I mean, missed tackles, missed opportunities. Yep. And when you throw an interception in the end zone, when you fumble like George Pickens did, all of a sudden, once again, it's a first quarter domination. And the Steelers in these seven games, Chris, dating back to 2016, they've been blown out in the first quarter of games. Absolutely. Unless the reality is missed tackles by key players, right? Your best players. And that was late in the game. But early in the game, the Steelers fell down 14 nothing. And here's the reality. You turn the ball over. George Pickens fumble, right? Mason Rudolph interception. You've got to get a stop. And what's been so good about these Steelers the last three weeks coming into this game, they complemented each other, right? If an if a offense turned the ball over or they didn't, you know, they, something happened, the defense got to stop. If the defense gave up a long drive, the offense will go down and score. In this game, the turnovers and the defense that get a stop, those turned into 14 points. That's the difference. That's the difference for sure. And the Steelers tried to get back in this game in the second half. And Mason Rudolph, give him credit. He wasn't shying away. He made some plays that got them back in position to pull it to within seven points. But again, when you fall behind any team, especially one like Buffalo, given all the injuries too, they were vulnerable. But 21 points is a lot to fall behind. And that's what it was after Josh Allen made the 52-yard run. But Mason Rudolph on the day, 22 of 39, 229 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. It's interesting because he will be a free agent after the season. What did you think of his performance today? I thought he started out a little cold, but he got going in this game. I thought he carried them in the second half. The running game was pretty much non-existent, right? They had 23 carries for 106 yards, but Najee and Jalen didn't get much going in the second half. I thought that Mason kept him in the game, made some big throws in the second half, but what was the killer when they were down by one score were those penalties by Miles Jack and then also that missed tackle by Minka. The game was over after that. Yeah. Shakir made a great play to shake yep. him off, but Fitzpatrick must make Has that play. To. And I thought Pat, Pat Peterson was not very good. He didn't look the way you would have expected him to look in this game. But I thought also the beginning of the game, once again, a drive as soon as possible, 10 plays, 80 yards, seven to nothing, put him in uh, the uh, behind the eight, eight ball. And at that point, uh, you know, Buffalo had the advantage. Mike Tomlin about to address the media. Let's go there right now. You know, I compliment Coach McDermott and the Buffalo Bills for, for victory in a hard fought game. Um, you know, I appreciate the efforts of our guys in there. I just told them that, um, but efforts don't get it done. Um, so let's talk tangibly about why we weren't successful. Um, you know, we spotted them early um, in the football game uh, via the turnovers. Can't come into an environment like this versus a playoff caliber team and, and turn the ball over like that. and. And, um, and expect to be competitive, man. We spotted them. Uh, we fought back in it um, over the course of the, the game. Uh, we cut it to seven um, and was excited about that. Um, then we gave up a touchdown drive. When you get a major penalty within a drive on defense, that's usually going to produce points. Um, and that was the case. Um, and it put them back up by 14, and, and the rest is academic. And so um, I'm appreciative of the efforts. Um, but it's not mystical. Uh, we didn't do what was required to win tonight. We didn't take care of the ball. We didn't get it, get the ball from them enough in an environment like this, and thus uh, the score. Had a couple of injuries. Joey Porter, Allen Robinson are in the concussion protocol. Uh, Pat Frymuth had an ankle, um, had limited availability there toward the end of the game. Questions? No question, uh, but we talked about quarterback mobility and what he and they are capable of. Um, it probably not the story of the game was the mobility, but the turnover component, you know, um, got to do better. Mike, what kept you from getting a consistent ground game offense? Um, their efforts. Um, they did a really good job of packing the line of scrimmage and, um, you know, forcing us to throw the ball more vertically, probably a little bit more vertically than we wanted to. We adjusted, we started doing that, and we started moving the football. Um, so credit to them. Mike, what, did they do something different with their tight ends, or did what you had planned just not work the way you hoped it 
you know, we've had our issues with tight end matchups over the second half of the year. Um, we adjusted in game, uh, but they made some plays definitively early on. You know, I didn't think about it, to be quite honest with you. We knew all week he wasn't playing, and so we prepared with that mindset. And so I didn't waste any time thinking about what, what wasn't at our disposal. Uh, we had too much at our disposal and too many decisions and considerations to be made to waste time like that. How do you think Mason did after throwing that I thought he was solid. I thought he was competitive. I thought his confidence was unshakable. I thought he, you know, displayed the things that he displayed really f for the last month or so. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. Bob Pompiani and Chris Oak back with you. It's been one and done for the Steelers, and here is the history about this. Uh, of course, they lose this year 31 to 17. Prior to that, uh, a lot of blowouts. The scores were not as close uh, as these uh, scores indicated. The games were over by halftime in many of them. And so the Steelers, once again, no playoff wins in the last seven years, which is a long streak for a franchise like this. In the meantime, Pat Fryermuth spoke to Rich Walsh in the locker room. Let's take you there. You know, we were, you know, doing great the past three weeks and hope to bring it in here. And I think um, it sucks. It sucks. It's hard to spot a team 21 points, isn't it? Yeah, yeah especially in their venue, uh, you know, down 21 nothing. Um, it's hard to come back from that and recover from that. And, uh, you know, we, we fought back, uh, we didn't quit, and um, but it wasn't good enough. Yeah, I was going to ask you, do you feel like it was a case of too, um, you know, too little, too late? Did you feel like you were getting into a rhythm there in the second half, especially at the end of the first half? Yeah, um, you know, we were able to move the ball and score some points, and, um, you know, we, had, we, we just got to uh, execute. And like you said, it all comes back to giving them 21 points. Uh, being 20, 21 nothing down, um, it's hard to come back from. How much did weather play a factor? It didn't play a factor at all. Seemed like you guys had an emphasis on trying to establish that run again. What was the difference this week that didn't work? Yeah, they uh, threw some good schematics at us. Um, you know, bigger people. Um, all comes down to executing. Um, yeah. What can you say about the way this team came together? All right, that's Mason Rudolph now speaking at the podium. We're flying live here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go there and hear from the Steelers quarterback. That's ex as explosive as they are. You want to try to. You know, have a fast start, and we didn't. And um, um, you know, we knew being on on the road, you gotta come out and you know keep it close early, and we didn't. But you know, it was probably the way we fought back there at the end, and um, never never stopped believing, and put you know one stack, try to stack one good play on top of another. It was a good, it was a great play by the defender. Um, kind of a timing deal. Thought he covered tape well out of his break. Um, I mean, he he was in his low hip. He just, the little leverage was a little off. I just got to put that ball out much more outside, us or nobody. But like I said, he, he made a great play. You know, you scored at the end of the first half, and then you come out in the second half, you have a big stop, get the field goal. You start to think at that point, OK, things are turning around here. And we have to take Absolutely, yeah, no, I was, um, the score, like you said, at the end of the half was big to keep us keep us in it, and um, and then and then the field goal and then the touchdown cut it to seven. So, like I said, I was I was uh, proud of the way. I mean, everyone in the in the in, on the offensive side of the ball, you know, defense did a, did, a, did a good job too. But I know our guys uh, never stopped believing and, and um, stayed in it mentally and encouraged each other and tried to you know put some points on the board. Something. Yeah, I think um, you know when I go back and look at the, the totality of the tape, I'll get a better feel for it. But I'm, I think, I think right now, um, I'm, you know, obviously we, we the plan was to come here and get a win, and we fell short, yeah. <clears throat> fell short to a great team. But uh, I, I think I can say I'm, you know, I was proud of what we as an offense put on tape these last few weeks and um, just the way we the way we celebrated, the way guys cheered for each other, the, whether the run game was, was working, whether the receivers were uh, rolling. I mean, it was just a, it was just, uh, we had, we had chemistry and we had belief and uh, love for one another. Yeah, Mason Rudolph should be happy with how he performed and all must wins including the second half today. But again, the deficit was too big. JP roofing final stats. 
Man, I mean, yeah, what stands out to me right here is the rushing, right? 34 for 179. I thought the defensive line did a great job at the point of attack. They've got to address the linebacker position in the offseason. Kelly uh, Holcomb's coming back, um, maybe Landon Roberts, but there's some guys in the game that they've got to look at and think, how can we upgrade? especially in the run game, because that's where they get beat at the second level. Yeah, Quan Alexander is one of many free agents the Steelers have, uh, and it seems like a yearly routine to try to address the inside yeah. linebacking core. We'll take a break, come back with more of our postgame analysis and interviews from Buffalo, New York, on a day of the Steelers. Season ends 31-17 at the hands of the Bills. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're talking about Josh Allen, what he did. He had his fingerprints all over this one, three touchdowns. But the one that was really critical, the Steelers were down 14, driving. Mason Rudolph throws in the end zone. His only interception of the day, but Elon made a nice play. It was a throw that he should have had more outside. They respond by driving right down the field, and it's a 52-yard touchdown by Josh Allen. Chris Hoke, I have a problem with the rules again. Here I go. But uh, listen, he's six foot five, 245 pounds. And when you're a defensive player, by the way, yeah. I thought there was a holding on that call that was not called against uh, Eric Rowe. Yep. Um, but what are you supposed to do? You you know he may slide, but then again, he doesn't slide. He likes to contact. So the, yeah. he people slow up. He kicks it no, into no, high gear. I don't and think then later, it, I don't they throw a flag. It, but in that 52-yard run, I don't think anybody was close enough to think he was going to slide. I think he hesitated, and that made everybody stop. And then he ran again, but it wasn't like a fake slide. I thought it was a questionable call. I didn't call. say we'll fake slide. I just no, said. but what I'm saying is I don't think people anticipated it. Was, I think it was a hesitation. It sat everybody down, and then he accelerated again. He's not slow, right? He might not look as fast, but when he's in the, in the field, if you look at his speed, next-gen stats, he, he, was, he was running fast. And so when he slows down and accelerates again and everybody stops, he's gone. Yeah, he's but then the later the drive where Miles Jack got called, He's approaching first down yep. yardage, and he does not normally, you know, give up contact. And so he decides to slide. He gets called for a hit, and then boom. And I, 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 I totally and agree took, with you that. I totally agree with yeah. you. We'll talk about that more later. Okay, but I agree we with will. You. Here's a quarterback comparison on the day. I thought Rudolph's numbers pretty decent. Again, the one killer interception that resulted in a 14-point swing, and that was pretty much what happened to make it 21 nothing. The game was over at that point. Yeah, and there were some drop balls in that thing. There were some falls. I thought he hit. Like, Mason Rudolph threw some beautiful balls to George Pickens. It was not George Pickens' best game. 11 targets, only came down with four, five catches. And a critical fumble. And a critical fumble. He had one in the end zone he should have caught. It was right in his hands. There was one he got held there, the last throw of the game. Um, well, a meaningful throw. There was one when he fell down on the sideline. Beautiful throw on Mason. So there were some throws that, were, that, were, that should have been made that weren't. But overall, it wasn't good enough to win the game. Coming up, we're going to have an edition of uh, KDK Plus Primetime News at the bottom of the hour. We'll show you some of the highlights that we've been talking about. But in the meantime, more analysis and postgame reaction from Buffalo as the Steelers' season ends. 31-17, Buffalo moves on. Kansas City goes there next weekend. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. All right, welcome back, Bob Pompiani, Chris Hoke with you. How about Najee Harris? He came in with back-to-back 100-yard -back games, and today, not so much. 12 carries, just 37 yards. Jalen Warren had four fewer carries, yet one more yard. He averaged 4.8. Not that for Najee Harris. Yeah, I, I thought the Bills did a great job at the, at the line of scrimmage, holding the point. Linebackers played well, especially in that first half. Um, they were around his legs a lot, and they made Najee go east and west. That's not when he's at his best. He's at his best when he puts his foot in the ground and he runs down. Yeah. Didn't get a lot of those kind of runs today. No, a little too upright. I think Jalen yeah. Warren attacks it hard, man, and he goes he, low. He does. He does. I thought that Jalen Warren, he had some big runs, a couple, couple longer runs that really skewed his numbers. Mm -hmm. But today, neither of them really had a big game. All right, let's talk to a member of the offensive line, Broderick Jones, after the game with Rich Walsh. Um, no, it was tough. It was a tough season for us. Um, I'm just glad the way the guys fought through it, um, overcame a lot of adversity, um, just ready to get back to it next year, um, attacked all season um, as much as possible, and, you know, just come back better than ever, ready for next year, trying to get back to it. You know, I, I look at it as maybe a slow start for you guys. Is it hard to, how hard is it to spot a team 21 points? It's, it's tough, but, you know, um, it wasn't our best game on either side of the ball. Um, we just got to be able to lock in and continue to play to the ability that we're we're capable of. And you know, if we if offense get a hot start, um, defense get a couple stops, you know, it's a different outcome. So was the weather a factor at all? No, nah, not really. Um, everybody's prepared to play in this weather. Um, it wasn't 
freezing cold out there. It wasn't too bad. It feels like this in Pittsburgh, so um, I really don't feel like the weather played a factor. It, maybe it did for some people, maybe it didn't, but um, everybody got different opinions about it, so you never know. Well, one thing we can say that when Broderick Jones entered the offensive line as a starter, things started to pick up in the, in the run game. And as for a rookie, I thought he did a very good job. There's no question. Listen, t the last 10 games of the regular season, the Steelers averaged 145 yards rushing a game. Before that, before that was the last 10 games of when Broderick Jones was a starter. Before Broderick Jones was put in the starting lineup, they were only averaging 80 yards a game. Do I think it was all him? No, but he brought a mentality. He brought a dog mentality. He came out and he was really good in the run game and it was contagious and it permeated through the offensive line room. Where he's got to improve this year, Bob, is in his pass protection. He gave up some big pressures, a sack in this game. He can't, Bruce, I mean, Russo did a great job beating him inside. That's where he's got to work on. But I see a lot of Marquise Pouncey qualities mm -hmm in Broderick Jones. I think he's going to end up being a big leader for a lot of years ahead. Yeah, there's no question. He means business when he gets in there. Just a reminder for you, coming up tonight at 1035, Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. For those of you who want to call in, we'll take those calls at 1035 tonight. In the meantime, we'll take a break, come back with more reaction from Buffalo on a day the Steelers fell behind early and could not dig out. 31-17, you're fine. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. All right, welcome back. In case you missed it earlier in this broadcast, Mike Tomlin at his final press conference of this season. Final question, Brooke Pryor of ESPN asked him about his future. He walked off. He did not answer it, uh, which will obviously mean more people will be talking about this situation. He has one year left on a deal. Uh, I do a show with him, Chris. I never get the feeling that he's burned out at all. I think he has still well, a lot Jim of energy. Even Jim Nance said that today, too, right? Yeah, I mean, they interviewed him yesterday, spent some time with him, and they, they know him well. They got no impression, just like you, that he was going to hang it up and move on. So I, I, I think it would be a surprising move by him to move on after this game. Yeah, but obviously there's going to be a final, final press conference, and at that point, uh, Mike Tomlin will have to address that question, and I don't know how long it would take if there is an extension coming. It normally would happen here now, sometime yeah. in the next month. I would say because, you know, we got the combine coming up uh, in, in a few weeks. But here's the thing. I, I can see it changing if he didn't want to make some changes on his, his coaching staff and Mr. Rooney wanted him to make those changes. Then that could change very quickly. Mm -hmm. So right now as we sit, we'll see how this unfolds over the next three weeks. All right, let's take a look at our Ford Road ahead. No games. We got the combine coming up, then free agency. And keep this in mind, Rudolph, Juan Alexander, Miles Killebrew, Montrevious Adams, Levi Wallace, uh, also, Marcus Golden, Shandon Sullivan, all free agents. They're going to have a lot of work to do as they try to reconstruct a roster. And then you got the OTAs beginning, the draft in April, and then rookies. And before you know it, Chris will be at St. Vincent College again Can in Latrobe. It goes so fast. It goes so fast. Yeah, we wanted we'll this right to back go here longer. Again. Yes. Coming up next, it's a special edition of the KDKA Plus Primetime News with Jessica Gway and Ray Petlin. Gway Ray coming up.